Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. If you're new, welcome back if you're a subscriber. Special thanks to all of my patrons. My name's Neil and it's time for another episode of QI. This is another recommendation from the YouTube comments. Thank you to the multiple people who suggested I check this episode out. We are going to series I, the ninth series of the show, episode five. This one's called Invertebrates. Now, one of the cool things about these recommendations is I have no idea why they're recommended. I don't know whether it's because there's a special guest star or whether there's one particular moment of hilarity or whether it's just a strong episode all the way through. So I really walk into these episodes cold, which I like. I like being surprised. I like being caught off guard. I like the novelty of it all. For those of you watching along on my Patreon, uh, I've included the link below. This is the XL version, so make sure you're watching the XL as opposed to the regular version of this episode. And if you haven't checked out my Patreon, consider checking it out. You'll get early access and f all my full-length reactions as well there. And it's the best way to support the channel and ensure that I can continue to put out content like this on a regular basis. I love doing it and I love everyone who supports me. For those of you who can't, I totally get it. Thank you for spending a little bit of time here today on the channel. All right, without further ado, guys, let's jump into it. This is episode five of series I, Invertebrates. Welcome to QI for a show that's all about insects and other invertebrates. Busy as a bee, Jimmy Carr. <laughs> Nug as a bug, Sarah Millican. Oh, I haven't seen Sarah in a little while. She's great. Knee high to a grasshopper, Johnny Vegas. I'm getting lots of Johnny episodes. This is this is encouraging. His head fruitlessly against a window, Alan Davis. <laughs> oh. oh, that's the worst. Alan goes. <laughs> <laughs> There are some questions to which nobody knows the answer. Mm. Ooh, nobody, nobody knows. knows. If you use it the wrong time, you're going to look like a bit of a tit. So, <laughs> <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> Just keep it up, what Johnny. Do bees do better than dogs. Make honey. <laughs> That's probably true. I yes. That's probably certainly true. true. Probably yeah. on making honey. Okay, yeah. fine. That's the no, way you want to play no, it. I'll give you that one. But <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I'm currently in the lead. Yeah. <laughs> like you would never know if a bee had sniffed your crotch, would you? Oddly enough, you've used a word in there. Is it crotch? Sniff. <laughs> Are they good at like sniffing out drugs or something? Uh, to sniff in, in customs and for security, bees. for explosives and for drugs. It takes a dog about three months at least to be trained to be a sniffer dog. It takes a bee ten minutes. All you have to do is put it in a box, all right? With some cocaine. And smell and some sugar simultaneously, and it will instantly associate that smell with sugar and a reward. Unless is drug it? dealers. Had an allergy to stings. I can't see them being pinned up against the wall by a policeman. <laughs> on, a, on a bit of kite, you know, like kite twine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what if they just haven't got much of a sweet tooth? But it, I, I, like I mean, there may be a rogue bee that likes meat <laughs> or salami. And it's called a wasp. Well, it's not a bad idea, because that was always the old joke about the, the best way to smuggle drugs would be, obviously, in, in a dog's bum. Because when the sniffer dogs come through... <laughs> How much could you get in a bee's bum? Very little. Very little. <laughs> <laughs> My dad um, once punched a bee. Punched a bee? <laughs> bees are valuable, and as we know, they're in trouble. There seems to be this... That thing one was. We go. That, I've got a plate here of insect-related foods, uh, Sarah, and you can choose your award. This Ooh. is a lolly. Which With is a scorpion in it. Oh, ant. I've had ants. I've had grasshopper. I've had termites. And where's the or treat part? Cho <laughs> chocolate ant. Would you like a chocolate ant? Oh, I'll suck it. If I had a chocolate gonna... ant, would you have one? Uh, I'll let you go I'll get... first. Oh, no. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm not really bothered, to be honest. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't you know even what? eat brown bread. 
<laughs> Strange life form that's well, a bit... Well, yeah, it's unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> it may well be the world is going to turn towards this kind of food because 2.5 billion of the world's population already regularly eat insects. Is that just by mistake when you're on a bike? <laughs> <laughs> by the year 2030, they reckon there will be... There will be such a shortage of protein as the population increases and insects and other invertebrates. What year was this Maybe done? The spider's genius, isn't it? Because like chicken legs, but like they got ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the advantages of eating and breeding insects for food? You get to pretend to be a giant. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're much more efficient biologically. Like it takes much less energy to make insect protein than. Oh, I don't know. A cow, for instance. But when they, they lay Way eggs, less they lay water, lay less... That's right. They? But They're breeding only a few cycle. of them survive. But if you've got them in it, you can have all billion of them. They produce far less noxious gas than cattle. Yeah, how would you contain insect equivalent of foot and mouth? <laughs> if you're trying to sort of get this uh, as an idea, you yeah. know, this could solve starvation, could you maybe pick a picture of a guy that looks less nuts? <laughs> 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 It because if he's me if he's meant to be Captain Birdseye of the insect world, <laughs> he couldn't look any creepier. Did... Even the frame of the picture looks like you're about to black out. <laughs> <laughs> They're good for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there is no reason not to. Eat them. I, mean, I expect they're... you to die, Mr. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so, shrimp is essentially it's the same thing, isn't it? It's just it, in the it, sea. We eat right. shrimp on exactly. Yeah. And lobster, and... He's got an ant leg. <laughs> I got oh, you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was a mistake. I've got a terrible bitter aftertaste, the, the smoked insects and plants. I had them at Bug World in Liverpool. Well, you're supposed to eat them. Is it shut now? Because you ate everything. Well, that... <laughs> <laughs> that giant snail was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> You, no, you, you, you're offered a bit at the end. You've got a natural history museum just lifting the cases. <laughs> <laughs> I've also got acid reflux, I have to say. <laughs> I have to say, we've got some I feel right. like shit at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> this is really, it has not gone damn well. Um, <sighs> you know the premier site uh, on the internet uh, for dogs that are dressed as bees? Do you know? The, it's, it's the My favourite or the most popular yeah. one? The most <laughs> Beedogs.com. Beedogs. Imagine a bee flying back and going, I found the queen! <laughs> I found the mother of all queens! <laughs> <laughs> I've got a little leg stuck between my teeth. Um, how can you tell if your dog has a guilty conscience? Your slippers are full. Your slippers are full. It's <laughs> trying to put it in a nice way. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah, for spelling it out. Make a massive fuss of you. Ah, that's a very more than usual. So thought, to, to try and make you love it and to make up. Yeah. But that was husbands. <laughs> I I mean, do well, they that's feel... the point. The answer should have been nobody knows. It's all in the mind of the owner. I've still got a little scaly something in the back. <laughs> oh, I'm so looking forward to being brave and butch and taking this insect. Mm, it's revolting. So, so dogs uh, don't have any sort of moral. Oh, a little wing casing or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, dogs can identify guilt in people. It's only at airports, but bees are better at it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, why aren't there any vegan Venus flytraps? Maybe there are, uh, but people don't invite them round for dinner because it's too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Vegan. Yes. I mean, I, or, or the, no, I'm not right. Do, um, do we need to call an ambulance? Hasn't it got to hit two of them within a certain time frame? Absolutely for it to, right. To go. They have a sort of time system. They've got a trigger. If yeah. you were one of those plants and you were starving, but you technically had a mouthful of lettuce. Yes. It would never know. No. It would starve to death it rather would. than eat a salad. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you have so much in common with these. Yeah. <laughs> would it be able to digest part of your finger? I'm, I, I'm going to send you one and you will do the experiment. <laughs> and let us know. Um, you could try a knob as well, it'd be funnier. <laughs> one more. In, in the cause of science. <laughs> It would be a penis flytrap. No. Oh, it was right there. I can't believe I didn't see it.
There's a spider that does the same thing to catch insects, which is there. Look at that. That's not real, it's just a drawing. That I admit. <laughs> <laughs> I admit we don't actually have. <laughs> well spotted, Jimmy. It does seem crazy, but nature is crazy. And then he drinks in a saloon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best way to charm a worm? When it rains, they come up. Yeah. So birds do that, where they jump up and down and they make a noise like rain, and then they come up. Is yes. Work? Could you charm a worm with a tiny flute? Well, worm like charming a snake is charmer? a big, I won't say industry exactly, <laughs> but it's a big pastime, both in America and in this country. Oh, for God's sake. I know. <laughs> It's so American. That's that myth, isn't it? That that's where they've been cut in half. You can chop them in half. You can do it with any animal. Yeah, but they don't jump. <laughs> <laughs> but in America, they call it grunting. This worm charming, and it's reasonably big business because Americans love to fish, and yeah. obviously bait shops need worms. She's got flip flops on. She's just taking extra flip flops. <laughs> well, that's only done it to annoy you. Oh, it's driving Alan nuts. In Britain, the sport, if I can call it that, um, you may not. involves. <laughs> you may not. <laughs> You have to lure yeah, as Ken many Goddard worms right. as you can in 30 minutes. With a recorder? Well, with anything you choose. And why the, the time constraint? Is that because it's just you're out on day release? Well, <laughs> <laughs> possibly. The, the Woodhall Worm Charming Festival in Lincolnshire, none of the entrants in August 2010 managed to lure a single worm. <laughs> were they in a building? <laughs> they, were, they were in a local <laughs> gymnasium. They had to go in the church hall. <laughs> <laughs> Train spotting, there are trains. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next thing the train spotters are stood on the hill going, Loser! <laughs> 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 <Get away! laughs> <laughs> now, when would you go out with a bucket full of ladybirds? Uh, aren't they really good to get rid of aphids? Don't they kill uh, aphids? Green, green fly. fly, yeah, they're very good pest control. Animals. Is that what you call you aphids? Sure pests, green fly? Might be. Well, they're a pest if you're an aphid, obviously. Yeah, but okay. As far as we're concerned. I thought you said if you're an atheist. Ladybirds <laughs> 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 proving the existence of God again. <laughs> oh, must be a God because they're so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Dawkins hates them. But the problem with them is if you order them on the internet and you get a bucket full, if you release them, they'll simply fly away. So there's a Are they homing? You release them homing ladybugs? Because they don't fly at night. So you release them into your garden at night and they'll go to work and do what they Is can. there a difference between a ladybug and a ladybird? I feel like I'm going off on my own tangents right now, but... Why, why not just go to them individually and sort of break a bit of wing? <laughs> well, you do want them to fly a bit. Well, that's like... Yes. Well, that's how I said break a bit. I didn't say smash, <laughs> but... A bit of aspirational flight, but you can't <laughs> escape. You want to clip their wings, okay. It's not like I go up picking on random... Ladybirds, is it? It's slavery is what it is. No, yeah. no, what it is, it's about getting your money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, how did the thing with the amazing eyes escape from the tank? So oh, is a this... There's a mantis shrimp, although it isn't a true shrimp, but it's a crust. This is the one that's got, like, the insane acceleration or something, and it makes a huge amount of noise, doesn't it? Or... So they have three types of vision in each eye. Wow. In it. Look at it there. Like bifocals. But even more than that, they have power. They have power that is almost jump. beyond belief. Power beyond belief. <laughs> they do. Is uh, it the power of prayer, Stephen? Do they pray? <laughs> <laughs> it's the power of Grayskull. They're it's mantis absolutely. shrimps, but they're not praying mantis shrimps. No. Could they? They're, nice, uh, though. Nice. Come yes. on. Whoa. They can accelerate through the water at 10,000 times the force of gravity, which causes the water in front of them to boil. I know it sounds mad, but that's how extraordinary that, they are. That seems like a disadvantage, because then suddenly, when you stop, you're in boiling water. <laughs> <laughs> I can show you one punching its prey. Like being a man. Uh, It'd uh, better uh, have a capacity. That's it on the left there. Um, and there's it. Bang. Ooh, that is just oh. insect domestic violence. <laughs> <laughs> Saltwater battery. They can see ultraviolet, infrared, and they're the only creature on Earth that can see circularly polarized light. Does Maybe that mean they can watch Avatar without the glasses? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to see a shrimp on a running machine? More than you know. this. <laughs> 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 oh my God, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's pretty good. Sort of research into Mary Rose sauce. <laughs> and he's oh, yes. up on a pin now on the third turn. <laughs> <laughs> and he's looking 
fucking strong. He's not fucking bad. He's lost his jockey, but he's still well, in the man. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the man's responsible. I'm waiting to see a crab with some dumbbells. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is nice. As you say, we'll happily eat them as a treat. But these... Oh, God. Um, <laughs> it's not done me any favours. And I felt so confident I was going to have the scorpion as well. I'm not now. I love the scorpion. No. I'll, I'll break it in half. And good, that's a good idea. Like Make it manageable. Yeah. <laughs> Half the poison, half the fun. <laughs> <laughs> tail end or front? Well, I would go with the front. The tail end might have a sting in it. Always <laughs> ask a lady. Now he's got a mouth full of rock Back sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, sugar is. It's it? horrible. The brick. Can't feel my toes. <laughs> Go on, Sarah. You know you You've want to. You've got to be joking. Have you seen? What have we happens. all developed superpowers as a result of this? <laughs> <laughs> Something's happening. Something's happening. <laughs> 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 Johnny Vegas superpowers. <laughs> Are scorpions known for forward rolls? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, so we were oh, yeah. showing your ignorance there. They're very famous for their, <laughs> their forward roll. I've tried a scorpion and I've tried an ant. Well done. And that's it. All right. That's like the start of a really bad musical. I tried a scorpion. I tried a scorpion. I tried a scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> so have you had anything, Sarah? Have you had no. Any? No, no Sarah. You should try an ant, really. I think you should have an ant. You no, an ant. well, you're not my mum, so. <laughs> <laughs> really? My mum said you don't have to put anything in your mouth you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was your sex chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't mention your vagina then. No, no. <laughs> 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 I'm, not, I'm not saying now, but if you did, five minutes before a gynaecological appointment, <laughs> I've got a bit of an itch. <laughs> From shrimp mills to ant mills, what does an ant mill do? What happens is occasionally they lose the pheromone trail that the leaders of the foragers have, and they start following each other in a circle, and the circle just goes round and round until they die. They just get completely stuck what, in like a loop. like an ultimate conga? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did they, read they that. They follow the one in front. Like dads at a wedding. Yes. <laughs> I've got a rule, like, if it comes in my house, then I'm allowed to kill it. Right. Trespassing. So how many Jehovah's Witnesses have <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't you breathe in if you're a stink ant? Your friend's anus. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a general stink. rule. I don't think <laughs> <I think, laughs> It's a really creepy and unpleasant life cycle that the stink ant is victim of. Way up in the canopy somewhere is this spore. And oh. uh, occasionally, psh, like that, and, you know, is this like the and, zombie spore that infects their down. brain and, and drives the them up top in, and then blows out their the skull? from inside and it starts with the brain and it does something that the ant would never otherwise do. It makes the ant climb the tree. Yeah, so I saw this on tree until it gets to a certain height. Planet Earth, maybe? The ant then puts its mandibles into the tree and waits to die. And then this great shoot comes out which produces more spore that drops down and drags up more ants. This is it here. It's being eaten from the inside. Oh. Yeah. And there is the spore growing out of what was once its brain. And, and there's that spore growing out. And then it eventually stops and starts... Psh, the whole thing starts again. When people say there must be a god yeah, because of skylarks and water yeah. voles, you say, yeah, and because of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's called cordyceps is the name of this particular fungus. Yes. Give it its human name, uh, Special Brew. <laughs> that is a good visual representation of what the hangover's like of it. <laughs> oh, what am I doing up a tree? <laughs> Name a vertebrate with no backbone. 
Nick Clegg. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there is something that is classified as a vertebrate that has no backbone. Like a whale or something? Well, it's not a mammal. It is a fish, though. Big fish. Eel. Oh, dolphin? sharks. Uh, 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 a, a dolphin isn't really a fish, is it, to be honest. Is it is it a, sharks uh, are cartilaginous. It looks like one. I don't, I don't know. know. No, it still is. No, well, stingrays and mantises are, actually don't have them, but it's, it's the shark. Yeah. They neither have rib cages nor do they have backbone. And there you can see a little cross section of a shark. He doesn't very, look very cross. happy, does he? No. <laughs> it's a very cross section. <laughs> they, don't, they, don't have, they don't have rib cages, though. Just right behind his yes. eye, going all the way back to his tail, along his back, yeah. that looks like a bone. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm just saying. It's cartilaginous matter. Go cartilage, as we would say in England. <laughs> 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 that's all right to say on that subject, so... Let that be an end to it. Yes. What's Next the strongest one. creature for its weight in the world? Is yeah. it Johnny? This creature can uh, pull a force equal to 100,000 times its body. It's not even an insect, it's even tiny. It's be our old friend bacterium. It's a again. bacterium, it's a, it's a bug in that sense, yeah. And it's mm. not, not one you want to catch, let's be honest. The gonorrhea. Gonorrhea yeah. is the right answer for some reason. The strongest reason. thing in the world. Yeah, uh, the, the gonorrhea bacteria. Pull down your pants and. <laughs> <All right now. laughs> That's your excuse for catching. Gonorrhea is a bacteria, <laughs> eh? I, I don't know, I assumed it was like a virus. But. Apparently, they have these bundles of long, thin, contractile filaments called pili. Why the, is uh, all that toast on this? Yeah. Yeah. They put a sort of umbrella, umbrella. No. Up, up the urethra no one and then needs pull to hear out. It. We've heard it, we don't need to hear it. I'd like to hear it. Tell us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very cringy. Yeah. Very cringy. If you had a particularly unsympathetic doctor, he'd then jump around the room going, I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate and sell it as ants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me. Yeah, that's enough of gonorrhea, I feel. What do oyster catchers mainly eat? Clams. Oysters? No! Cockles and mussels, mostly. Are they just not very good at catching the oysters? They just love a cockle. They <laughs> <laughs> and, and the amount they catch, it's astonishing. Each oyster catcher can get 500 cockles a day. That's a potential seasonal consumption of 8.9 million tonnes of cockles. But I love a cockle. cockle. Oh, I love cockle. Oh, oh in vinegar, just like a little work. stick. Pint to them, yep, that's oh. it. Gorgeous. <laughs> Which animal has the most genes? There's line them. Jeremy Clarkson. Yeah. Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> There's the buzzer. <laughs> 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 It's it to do with the age, it's not to do with the complexity. Yes, yeah. it may be Jeremy some... Clarkson. Because <laughs> <laughs> some plant has got loads more genes than us. Yes, there are quite a few things that have a lot more genes than us. The fruit fly has many more genes than we do. But this is actually just a little water flea. 8,000 more genes than the human genome, which is quite a lot. And it doesn't do much, it lies around. It Very... carries its own umbrella. It carries its own umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> Why are moths attracted to light? They navigate by the moon. Oh. Well done! <laughs> You're good at this. Oh. Well done, Alan. It would have come up. Someone yes. would have told me. Yes, you're right. It does seem odd that they only come out at night, because, I mean, if they, if they saw the sun, they would love it. Yes, you do. Because <laughs> the amount they like my bedside lamp... Exactly. I mean, they love my bedside lamp, but, but the sun that's is why they... significantly and... bigger than my bedside lamp. Yeah. <laughs> the fact is, nobody really knows. I like their ambition. I like to think that they think it's the moon, and they go, I can make it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you turn the light off. I always feel really guilty, because it's as if they go... Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In um, a resolute last place with minus 24 is Mr. Jimmy Carr. <laughs> Teetering on the brink of plusness is Alan with minus one. Wow, Jimmy's just terrible compared Sir to everyone else. American's first performance has been astonishing with plus two. <laughs> but tonight's winner with plus four is Johnny Lager. <laughs> Good night. I just recently watched an episode in the most current series, Series S, that Johnny won. And he acted like he had never won before. So I feel like I've been a bit, little bit lied to here. Because here's proof that he has won before. Great episode. Insects and creepy crawlies and Stephen... Having trouble with a chocolate ant for half the episode. A uh, lot of fun.
A lot of fun. Sarah Milliken's debut. She's great. I haven't seen any with her in a while, but I always thought she was a lot of fun. And, I mean, how can you go wrong with Jimmy Carr? He's great. Um, man. Yeah, again, I don't have a ton to comment on. I just love this show. Um, I'd love to hear your recommendations. Um, other things I'm considering doing here on the channel. I know a lot of you are still asking me to do Would I Lie to You reactions. Uh, the owners of those shows, whoever owns the copyright, are diligent about sh uh, copyright claims and shutting down my previous videos for them. And, uh, and uh, it, it, it reached the point where it just wasn't worth it because my videos would only stay up for a day or two before they were taken down and blocked. And yet, I'd love to go back to Would I Lie to You. There's a new episode of Bob Mortimer kicking around out there and I, I have to react to it. I can't just watch it because there's a chance. So that may be coming. Let me know if you guys are interested. And there's also an American version of Would I Lie to You that's about to debut. And I, I fe it, I've seen the trailer and it doesn't inspire confidence that it's going to be a good show. It feels like um, a failed experiment, much like American Taskmaster. But I don't know if you guys would be interested in me checking it out or whether I should just sort of stick with what we all love. Classic QI. Anyway, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts about what, what you'd like me to see uh, in the future. Whether it's just more episodes of this or whether you've got other ideas. And if you want to vote on what I see in the future, check out my Patreon. Where we have early access, we have full-length reactions, and you can vote in my polls about my weekly movies, what shows I'll be doing next, and everything else. So until next time, everybody, take care, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.